To begin this unit, we're going to take a look at the communication systems framework, which is basically a diagram that reflects the different stages of a message being sent throughout a communication system. So basically in this framework, there are multiple levels, okay, and at each level, different things are happening. So our first level is the application level. Now, this level is primarily where participants and users are involved. This is the end they see where they're interacting with the communication system, okay? So at first, there is a source, okay? And the source could be, for example, a participant creating an email message, okay? When they do that, they type it up in an email client, they type up their message, okay, on their local laptop, okay? Because it is an email in this example we're using, it will be using the SMTP protocol. But other protocols used at this level include HTTP for web browsing, okay, and SSL, the secure socket layer, for adding security to the HTTP protocol when using secured sites, such as using financial transactions. Once the message has been created at the source, okay, or originates from the source in the case of a website, it then needs to be encoded for transmission. And this is where we go to our next level, okay? Which is the communication control and addressing level. Here, the message is encoded for transition. Basically, what happens here is the message is turned into packets of data to be sent, okay? And it's broken up into these different packets. It is given the address of the recipient, okay? And it is applied with the IP address so it can find it's a, a device. The TCP protocol can also be used in order for error detection to occur. It makes use of the checksum version of error detection and it basically ensures that once the actual message gets to the recipient, confirmation is given back saying it got here and it got here correctly. Okay, so the message is encoded. It still hasn't been sent yet. Okay, at the transmission layer level, which is the third level, is when the message is actually sent. So basically it gets transmitted okay around the network and basically different protocols are used depending on the network topology being used so if it is a ring topology a token ring protocol be used otherwise most likely for a bus topology an ethernet topology would be used okay so the message will get transmitted okay from the actual system the user is using it will go down a medium okay a wired or wireless medium Okay, if it's a wireless uh, medium, it might be using radio waves. If it's a wired medium, you could be using twisted pair cabling, or you could be using optical fiber cabling. Okay, and this will take it to not just one switch or router, but maybe you, in the case of the internet, multiple switches and routers throughout the world. Okay, in order to get to the receiver. Okay, and the receiver would be attached to the person who we want to end up with the data's computer. Okay, from here, once it's gotten to the receiver, Okay, the message needs to be decoded back from the packets it was arranged in into its original message form, and then it reaches its destination. And the destination essentially is the system of the person who is requesting the data or has had the data um, transmitted to. So this system outlines the pathway of a message, the framework. Basically, the message originates at a source. It then gets encoded before transmission. It gets transmitted from one person's system through switches and routers and then gets picked up by another person's system. It knows the way to go based on IP and MAC addresses. Once it has been gone to the receiver, it, the message then needs to be decoded back into readable form so that the participants and users back at the application level can read it at the destination. So I hope this gives you an understanding of the overview of the communication systems framework.